many Americans maybe tune in and then they turn off or like, what do I care about what's happening in Israel? Well, you should care for many reasons. Number one, we read in the book of Genesis where it says, I'll bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. So that doesn't mean we agree with everything the government of Israel does. Far from it. But we understand God's plan for the Jewish people, what he's doing. That's number one. Number two, if we want to understand where we are on God's prophetic calendar, we watch Israel, literally the center of the world. We watch what's happening in Israel, in Jerusalem. So many things that the Bible says are coming that Jesus himself warned his Jewish apostles about, his disciples who became his apostles. He warned them about what was going to happen, not to the United States of America, but to Israel, the nation of Israel, the Jewish people. And Jesus said, if you want to understand the times and know where we're at, be aware of these events that are going to unfold, many of them specific to the nation of Israel and to the Jewish people. So, do you want to understand the times? Some say, no, I don't. Not uncommon. I have people tell me, I don't want to know these things. Ignorance is bliss. That's what they say. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Reject blessings from God. How many of you want to be blessed by God today? How many of you want the blessing of God on your life? Well, there's several ways to do that, right? The Bible is very clear about that. Pursuing holiness or sanctification, something that we all should be doing as Christians. There's justification, instant salvation by faith in Christ alone, his death, burial, and resurrection, his work on the cross, right? Justification. And then there's sanctification, ongoing faithfulness and obedience. As we work, all of us daily, every one of us as Christians, working to die to the old man, the old mind, and serve the new mind, the mind of Christ. That brings blessing, fleeing from sin, pursuing sanctification, ongoing faithfulness and obedience. That brings blessing, right? Honoring the Lord, following the Lord, obeying his precepts and commands brings blessing. And a fool ignores these things, right? Involved in folly and sin and suffers greatly in this life and the next. Well, that's basic Christianity 101, right? Most everybody knows that. That's a Christian or raised in the church. So you say, Brandon, what do you mean when you say, do I want the blessings of God? I just need to do what you're saying there right now. I need to flee sin and and obey God. That'll bring blessing. Yep. But you know what else you can do if you want God's blessing in your life? I've already mentioned it. One, don't curse the Jews. Is there a rise of anti-Semitism? Absolutely. Is there a lot of cursing of the Jewish people? There sure is. Do you want to be caught up in that? Do you? Because if you do, you're not going to have the blessing of God. In fact, you could have curse. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. Many people today curse the Jewish people, the Jewish state, and they don't even know why. They've just simply picked up someone else's sin, someone else's grievance, grievance, someone else's, well, lie. They've been lied to. They've been deceived. They've picked it up and they make it their own. And they're going to be cursed for it. Don't be a part of that. Understand what is God's plan for the Jewish people, the Jewish state. Yes, there are good Jews and there are bad Jews. There are good Gentiles, there are bad Gentiles. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's what the Bible says. So if you want God's blessing, aside from pursuing holiness, sanctification, ongoing faithfulness and obedience, one way is bless the Jewish people. How do you bless the Jewish people? One way you bless the Jewish people, folks, is by standing up to anti-Semitism, explaining it is from the pit of hell and explaining that Satan wants to destroy the Jewish people. Why? 
If you were to ask the average Christian today, why does Satan want to destroy the Jewish people? He seems like he does, doesn't he? Why? Most could not answer that question. In fact, most of you are going to churches, so-called, quote, churches, where you're so-called pastor, and you're not going to a church, many of you. You're going to a social club. You're going to some organization posing as a church with a fake pastor that the Bible calls a hireling. But m many in this audience, you're not going to a church and you do not have a pastor that could even answer this question. Why does Satan want to destroy the Jewish people? Because he does. The answer. There are no Jewish people around. They cannot come to Yeshua or Messiah. They don't become a messianic Jew like my friend Marty Getz or my guest who's about to join us live from Israel, Aaron, who's a messianic Jew. They don't come to Yeshua, our Messiah. We don't have Christian Jews that begin to preach the gospel, become great evangelists. And the conversion of many Jews to Yeshua, our Messiah occurs and without Jews, and without them coming to Yeshua, our Messiah, there are no Jews to roll into the millennial kingdom at the end of the age, the end of the tribulation. And by wiping out the Jews, God's word is not fulfilled. There is no kingdom of God for that thousand-year reign. And Satan wins. That's why Satan is now trying to destroy the Jewish people, just as he tried to stop the Jewish Messiah from even coming perverting the DNA of the Messiah's line in Genesis 6, trying to kill the little baby Jesus as a child for which his family had to flee to Egypt before they came back. Most people have no idea. So you want to bless the Jews? Don't curse them. Understand God's plan for them, the economy of God for the Jewish people, the Jewish state, prophetically. If you understand that and you defend that and you proclaim that, the Bible says a special blessing comes to you. I think not only in this life, and I think it does occur in this life, but in the next as well. Another way to get God's blessing, you know what that is? Understand the times. Understand the book of Revelation. I've said it many times. Revelation is the only book of the Bible that I know that comes with a special blessing for those who seek to understand it. Well, to understand it, you have to understand what's happening at the center of the book to the Jewish people, to the Jewish state, what's happening in the Middle East. You want to understand the book of Revelation? You have to understand what's happening with the Jewish state. And the Bible says there in Revelation, if you seek to understand this book, a special blessing will come to you. So you want to be blessed by God? Number one, pursue Holiness, sanctification, ongoing faithfulness, and obedience. Two, don't curse the Jews. Don't curse them. Be a blessing to them. You be a blessing to them by understanding God's plan for them and explaining it to other people and fighting anti-Semitism. And then another way you can be blessed is by understanding God's prophetic plan for the Jewish people and understanding the book of Revelation. Hey, I just gave you three ways that you can be blessed by God today. Why would you not want to be blessed by God? Of course you do. But many Christians today, they have no idea about the two of the three ways to be blessed by God I just mentioned. And this is why we cover this topic. You see, that's a question we, uh, we like to ask here all the time. So what? So what? Who cares what's happening in Israel? Does it impact me? Uh, but it does, and it can. It can impact you in a negative way, or it can impact you in a positive way. Now, let's just take out the spiritual aspect. Let's just talk about it from a natural aspect. You should care about what's happening to Israel, even if you're an atheist, even if you're an unbeliever. <laughs> you should care. Because the enemies of Israel are also the enemies of America. You say, well, I'm not a Christian. I'm an atheist. I don't care. I don't have a dog in this fight. Uh, I'm sorry, but the enemies of Israel, they don't look at it like that. They don't say, 
um, well, we won't go after this person and that person and that group or this town or that city because those people are godless and they hate the Jews too, so we won't go after them. No, I, they, they, they consider you to be in America. You're part of the great Satan. And if you're collateral damage, they don't care because they're on a satanic, demonic course. So you better care about Israel if you care about your own hide. Because the enemies of Israel see us as the great Satan, Israel as the little Satan, and they're coming after America to bring us down, to destroy our economy, to destroy our infrastructure, to destroy the power grid, our just-in-time food supply and inventory. They're looking to deplete our military ammunition, which they're quickly doing, which is why we're now sending cluster bombs, supposedly, over there to Ukraine, because we've run out of all the other ammunition to send them. Well, that's great for America. Disarm America and its military, and it can't defend Israel. Hmm, I think there might be an agenda here. Bring down the great Satan, and then go after the little Satan. So you should care. You better care. And that's why we do programs like this. Joining me now is Aaron. Aaron, thank you for joining us from Israel on this broadcast today. Hi, Brandon. Shalom. Great to be with you, and thank you for all those incredibly uh, supporting words and we are uh, we are blessed when we know that like yourselves gentiles are standing with us we don't have too many friends so anyone that stands with us as a friend we really appreciate it amen amen to that all right we come back we're going to go right to aaron we're going to find out what is going on hezbollah's provocations on the northern border boat of imminent war we also started out the show by announcing the fact that they have a day of resistance going on and it has spread to U.S. embassies and the Ben-Gurion airport. What is going on in Israel? How can we understand the times? Joining me now is Aaron from Israel. Aaron, we started out the show by mentioning this right here. Hezbollah's provocations on the northern border, boat of imminent war. Can you tell us about this, please? Yes, Brennan, they, there is on our border, they have a military installation. They know very well that Israel has a zero tolerance to things like that. This is an act of provocation. It's a political and a military strategic act. They are trying to bait us in. This is just another front that we've been facing. A few months ago, we had a little war in the Gaza Strip. Then uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had another war in Samaria, in the West Bank, uh, in a place called Janine. Now, where the focus is on our, our northern border, Lebanon, where uh, the Islamic fundamentalist group, backed by the Iranians, are trying to seduce, trying to provoke us. Uh, this is not a surprise. Um, I think I reported a couple of months ago uh, the top political analyst here in Israel, a man called Professor Mordecai Kedar, he made a very startling um, uh, news report saying there are many uh, rogue uh, guerrilla groups, splinter groups, who are now in the process of conglomerating with the Iranians, being funded by the Iranians, and they are looking at our internal conflicts, Brandon, our internal conflicts. They're looking at it as a weakness, and they're trying to exploit that. And uh, like I said, we had Gaza, we had Janine, now we have a new battle on our hands. Mm. Here's another headline. This is from the Jerusalem Post. Mm. Here's another Israel, the Palestinian Authority has allowed Iran to gain a West Bank foothold. Israel's ambassador to the UN stated that the Palestinian Authority was responsible for the escalation of violence in the West Bank. So um, <laughs> yeah. you're poor, your poor little nation. Well, me, you guys are just surrounded, right. aren't you? We are. We are where it, it is intense. We, we have these uh, constant conflicts. Um, and let me just say that the Palestinian Authority, I don't know what your 
media is reporting, but they are actually on the verge of collapse politically, financially. They are in a very serious condition. And actually, it's um, Israel, our government under Benjamin Netanyahu, he is actually offering them to help them out and to bail them out. And that is the uh, led by uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the political wing of the Palestinian Authority are called Fatah. And everyone knows that if his political wing goes under, then the people that are going to uh, rise up and rule is going to be Hamas. They are the military wing of the Palestinian Authority. And when that happens, that actually will be a disaster because it will be it will be like the Wild West where um, there will be so much disorder. And of course, the international aid that the Palestinian Authority gets, that will all stop. There will be no salaries to be paid. There will be no humanitarian aid. Why? Because none of these nations or humanitarian organizations, they will not trust in Hamas. At the moment, they only have enough trust uh, in the Palestinian Authority under uh, Fatah. But once Fatah go under, it will be a disaster. And Israel knows this. And this is why they are offering to help out the Palestinian Authority. But the problem is, is Mahmoud Abbas, he knows that if he sides with Israel, that could well be the end of him because Hamas will not tolerate that. So very, very complicated situation uh, in the West Bank. Okay, now you've got all that going on. And now here's another headline from the Jerusalem Post. Day of resistance spreads to U.S. Embassy and the Ben-Gurion Airport. And then it says that you have IDF, Israeli Defense Force, reservists, swearing off further service. Now, for those who don't know or don't remember, in Israel, many of the young people, folks, serve for, I think, about two years. And they'll go to their job, but they'll carry their rifle with them and their gear, and they're ready at a moment's notice uh, to, to go into literal battle to defend this little nation of Israel. And so they have these reservists. And if they say we're not going to serve, that becomes a massive national security problem, particularly when we're sitting here discussing all the many threats against Israel that we've just discussed today. So for us here in America and around the world, what is the day of resistance? What? Why are they clashing with the police? And why are IDF reservists swearing off further service? Well, it's all a continuation of the issue of the judicial reforms that started about four or five months ago. We remember, some of us will remember what happened, that our left wing went out, they protested. It got to the point of almost a civil war. Benjamin Netanyahu fired our defense minister. That really escalated the situation. Then the protesters went out, and so Bibi Netanyahu said, look, what, we're going to put a pause on this, we're going to have a break, and we'll come back to this later on. Now, the left, they knew very well uh, that this was just a stall, and it was. Bibi made it very clear. He let it calm down. It was a good, good political, tactical move. So now he started it up again. And uh, here's the thing, Brennan. Even the left wing, the polls say that about 80% of the nation, they actually want the judicial reforms. The problem is, is that the left don't want it to happen when the right wing government are in power. That's the problem. So, uh, you know, if they were in power, they'd be very happy with the judicial reforms. And the judicial reforms, in short, are basically to take away the main power from the judges. At the moment, three judges sitting in our, in, in our courts, they can actually change a decision that the whole of the Knesset, our Israeli government, makes. Unanimous decision 
uh, that the people have chosen the government for, but three judges, they decide we don't agree with this and they can actually change a judicial uh, decision. And so the people, the government, they don't want that all that power to be in the judges' hands. And so they want to change this uh, this uh, situation. Now, the first reading passed just last night, 64 votes for, 46 votes against. So that's almost two to, two to one, uh, or rather two to three ratio. Um, so it just shows that it, the, the elected government, they, they made the decision, they made the vote, it has passed one reading. Now, the, the opposition are very concerned. They believe that this could lead to some kind of corrupt or self-serving gain. And, and in a way, Brennan, they are right. Why? Because the right-wing government, who have been democratically voted in, they have certain agendas. But that's what a democracy is all about. If we make judicial reforms and in another year we have a left-wing government, I think the left will be very happy about it. Then they will be in the driver's seat. The problem is they are not in the driver's seat. They are not making the decisions. And so this is just, it's like, um, it's like children that are not getting their way, seeing teachers or parents make decisions that, that they don't like and they're kicking up a storm. And it really is a storm. It really is quite serious. Roads have been blocked off. The airport has had to close down temporarily, partially. Um, uh, army volunteers are uh, threatening. Um, Israeli cyber security uh, experts also are threatening. For your information, for those that don't know, any of our viewers, about a week ago, our internal security minister, he actually fired the top Israeli police officer. And that also led to mass demonstrations because our top Israeli security officer, he's got a great track record of, of doing incredible things for the he is well loved on in, in pretty much every uh, sphere of our society, and yet we have a very young, charismatic internal uh, 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 internal security minister. He wants to come in. He wants to bring about reform. Perhaps he's a little bit too zealous. He may he may be right in wanting to bring about reform but he's probably a little bit too zealous. And this is where Netanyahu as the leader, he has to try and keep a balance like a tug of war. He has to try and, 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 and uh, rein him in a little bit. So tensions on every side. 